This week on TGC News, tons of industry news, tons of new guns, and a deal of the week that you will not want to miss. Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News. I'm John Patton, and this new cartridge needs a name down in the comments. For some reason, the only name that comes to my mind is Pam. Have you ever wanted to go to SHOT Show, but were pissed they don't allow the public to come? Well, GunCon is your chance to see the latest and greatest from over 50 brands. Tickets are on sale right now at guncon.net. Go there right now, get yourself a ticket. Let's kick this week off with some industry news. The March background check numbers are in, and we did 2.6 million. That is actually the lowest on record for March since 2017, which is somewhat troubling. It's only 20,000 short of 2019 numbers, but still not great. Every month so far this year has been down from prior years, and with a total of 7.3 million for the year so far, I think we might be uh, officially, bring it back, Izzy, on the struggle bus. The entire industry is suffering, I think. We've got inflation that's higher than the government is willing to admit, unemployment that is significantly worse than the government is willing to admit, and an industry that has issues with lack of innovation, political attacks, and generally consumer exhaustion. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how the industry could improve these numbers. Of course, in the thing where you could, you know, the, do the thing. Winchester announced yet another contract win from the government. This time, it's for construction of a new facility at the Lake City plant just to handle ammunition for the next-gen squad weapon program. It seems like Winchester is just flat-out rolling in taxpayer dollars these days. This project will be the first new facility built at Lake City in decades and shows the government is fully committed to the next-gen squad weapon stuff. Okay. I mean, if you're going to commit, freaking commit. Moving on, Remington, a.k.a. Rem Arms, a.k.a. the gun side of Remington, not the ammo side, because they're different companies now, and I think both are assholes for not changing their names. Well, that company is back in the news with some reassurance. Apparently at EWA, which is European SHOT Show, a lot of people asked them if they were closing because they announced they're closing the fabled Ilian New York manufacturing plant. Well, in a recent YouTube video, CEO Ken Darcy says the Ilian plant was too expensive to continue using and it was outdated and that they are in process of a big move to LaGrange, Georgia, which we've talked about before here on the show. And basically, he assures people they are still in business. I want to point out a couple things. Ken Darcy was at the helm of the old Remington when they went bankrupt. Yes, it's the same guy that was in charge of that company that is now in charge of this company. Not only that, but it's bad <laughs> when you're at a trade show and people are asking if you're still in business. Someone in the comments, start a pool on how long it takes before we see Rem Arms go out of business. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you about this week's sponsor, Medical Gear Outfitters. 20,000% of gun owners don't carry enough medical gear on them every day, and it's 4 billion percent more likely for you to save someone's life than have to end it. These percentages have not been evaluated for accuracy. Medical Gear Outfitters has you covered. The Civilian Medical Trauma Kit has shears, a cat tourniquet, chest seals, and tons more. And if you're like me and go off the pavement, you need the Overlander Kit for your vehicle. You never know when you will become the first responder. Use code TGC10 at medicalgearoutfitters.com. How about some more new guns for you guys this week? Smith & Wesson released a few special editions to honor their new Maryville or Maryville, Tennessee facility. Honestly, it's a little bit lame, but at the same time, if I lived in Tennessee, I'd probably grab one. Essentially, they've taken the M&P9 in both regular and compact size and the Shield Plus with and without a safety, and they slapped the Tennessee TriStar right on the barrel. The prices are the same as usual, so I'm not really offended, I guess. Cool. Moving on from there, Ruger has a new version of the PC carbine. The thing that makes this one unique is that this is the first time they've offered a side folding stock. The other thing is that the stock is reversible to fold either direction and it's adjustable. That's neat. Combining that with the takedown feature, aka taking the barrel off the action easily, the whole thing is kind of neat. I know I crapped on ARs the other week for QD barrels, but 
it actually makes sense when the upper doesn't come off with two pins, right? The other highlights here, M-Lock handguard and threaded muzzle and blah, blah, blah. MSRP is $999, which is about $220 higher than the standard version of this gun. And honestly, I'm not sure I've seen another PCC with this complete feature set for that same pricing. Side folder, takedown, decent handguard, and threaded muzzle. That's not a bad price for what you're getting here. Weatherby is back in the news this week with two new rifles in their Vanguard line. This is their more entry-level line, but still has a sub-MOA three-shot guarantee, cold hammer forged barrels, two-stage triggers, and a couple other nice features. For the new ones, first we have the Obsidian, which is the ultra-basic version that's all black and can be had in 17 different calibers with an MSRP of 549. That's cheap for a sub-MOA guarantee. The other new one is the Spike Camp. This one features a Boyd's thumbhole style stock that is ambi as opposed to most thumbholes, which are heavily like right or left-handed. And this one also comes with a shorter 20 inch heavy fluted barrel that's threaded for a can or a break. This one can be had in 223, 308, 65 Creed, or 350 Legend. MSRP here is a grand. That is like a compact setup that could be kind of rad with a can you like especially for that 350 legend i don't know why i like that one the most weatherby rifles are generally known to be good quality so that could be cool and before i hit you with another new gun how's about an absolutely smoking deal of the week wheeler is back out it again and they put their fat wrenches on sale for 40 percent off for most people for you guys the people watching TGC using our link and code, it's getting bumped up to 50% off. You use our link in the description and the code is TGC50. Everything else is 20% off when you use our link and you get half off the wrenches. So again, use our link in the description and that same code TGC50 and get yourself an absolutely smoking deal. <laughs> I mean, come on. Now, how's about another new gun? Bear Creek Arsenal announced a new pistol called the Grizzly, and yes, it does take Glock mags. It's another Glock clone from them, and instead of the metal frame, like their Genesis Glock clone pistol, this one is a polymer frame. It is RMR cut, has a stainless barrel, pick rail under the nose, lightning cuts on the slide, and night sights. They claim it will be the most accurate most reliable and comfortable handgun available. MSRP is 345. That's down near the PSA dagger in pricing. However, I have a video dropping on Thursday that will show you that their Genesis Glock clone, the one from Bear Creek, is an absolute pile of trash. And this one has a big hill to climb to get our seal of approval. Get subscribed to see that video later this week.